this is the first time you've done it. The engine and transmission come out of your 911 together and they come out from below. So you're going to need to jack up the back of the 911 enough to clear the engine from the bumper. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with that task. It is very important to remember to disconnect the battery negative cable prior to starting to remove the engine. The starter is connected to the battery at all times and attempting to remove it when it's live can be hazardous to both the car and yourself. It's also wise to remove the red fuel pump relay from its socket as well. If you decide to work on the electrical system of the car while the engine is out and you turn on the ignition with the fuel pump relay in place, there is a chance that it could spill gasoline out from the disconnected lines. After the rear of the car is raised and the oil emptied, begin disconnecting the oil lines. The rear hard line connection, shown by the arrow, may be difficult to loosen due to many years of rust and corrosion underneath the car. Be careful not to damage this line when you are applying force to remove it. Use two wrenches, one to turn the line and the other to hold the other end of the line steady. Do not apply force to the line itself or you may end up damaging it. The line that connects the oil tank to the engine needs to be completely removed, illustrated by the white arrow. Two hose clamps connect the line to the bottom of the oil tank and the bottom of the oil filter. Inspect it carefully upon removal and use a brand new one upon reinstallation if there are any cracks or the hose is brittle. Have a drip pan ready as excess oil in the line will spill out when you remove it. The clutch assembly underneath the transmission needs to be disconnected. For 911s from 1976 to 1986, disconnect the clutch cable and remove the circlip that holds a small lever arm in place, yellow arrow. Then remove the small coil spring from the lever arm, white arrow, and then pry off the lever arm itself from the shaft using a small screwdriver. The remainder of the assembly arm, red arrow, should now be able to be removed from the shaft. Be careful of the U-shaped helper spring, green arrow, as it is loaded pretty tight and will spring back slightly when you pull the larger arm off the shaft. For earlier 911s, the process is a bit simpler as the clutch cable is connected directly to the throwout arm. Making sure that you have already disconnected the battery, disconnect the starter electrical connections. Make note of which terminal wire is connected to which as it's easy to mix them up when reconnecting them. The reverse backup light switch is hidden at the rear of the transmission located right above the transmission mount bar, shown by the white arrow. Be careful when pulling out these wires as the small brittle connectors can easily pull off the wires. If your 911 is equipped with a mechanical speedometer and you are removing the transmission then disconnect this cable and pull it out of the way. Disconnect the heater hoses from the heat exchangers. They should be attached to the top of the heat exchangers by hose clamps. Once the engine is out of the car, these should be checked. If they are original equipment, they will probably need replacing. Behind the front seats in the center of the car is a small access panel that allows you to access the shift coupler. Remove this panel and disconnect the shift coupler by removing the small hex screw that attaches it to the transmission selector rod. Do not disconnect it by loosening up the 13 mm clamp bolt as you will have to readjust the shift linkage later on if you do. Disconnecting this coupler is a very important step. As the engine is lowered, the transmission selector rod will rise up in the air. If the coupler is still attached to the selector rod, you may end up bending the selector rod and damaging your transmission. Upon reinstallation of the coupler, be careful not to strip out the delicate aluminum threads that hold the screw in place. If the coupler bushings are worn or missing, they should be replaced. In the engine compartment, disconnect the AC compressor from its mounting bracket and place it over the side of the car. Do not disconnect any of the AC hoses as this will allow Freon to escape from your system and render it useless. Tie the compressor down with a flex cord and make sure that you place a thick towel underneath in order to protect your car's paint. All of the fuel lines that are connected to the engine need to be disconnected. On the 911 SC, there are three separate connections. Fuel lines should be disconnected at the fuel filter and fuel accumulator if possible, white arrow. 
Be aware that some fuel will spill out of the lines when you disconnect them, so keep any source of potential flame, shop light, etc. away from the area. Prior to disconnecting the fuel lines, you may want to remove a few of the engine compartment's heater hoses. The large plastic one that connects the blower motor to the fan shroud usually gets in the way almost all of the tasks being done on the engine compartment. Disconnect the main engine wiring harnesses. On some models, there may be connectors that you cannot easily see without sticking your head inside the engine compartment. Feel around the sides and back of the engine to make sure that you have disconnected everything. For the 911 SC, there is a one wire set that connects to the chassis near the engine compartment fuse box and one that connects to the front of the engine compartment. The backup lamp and starter connections need to be disconnected and pulled aside as well. The oil tank breather hoses need to be disconnected. These are usually attached with hose clamps that are easily removed. There may be two or more depending on the type of fuel injection used on the engine. Begin the removal of the accelerator linkage bar by disconnecting it from the bell crank located on the transmission. The other end of the rod should simply snap out of the fitting that is located on the top of the engine inside the engine compartment, indicated by the yellow arrow. Access is usually tight in this area and may require some effort to obtain the necessary leverage to remove the accelerator bar. If your car has cruise control, disconnect the control cable from the throttle bracket. The cable is held on by two small screws shown by the arrow. Be careful not to drop these. As you remove them, they can be difficult to retrieve. You also need to disconnect the two vacuum hoses from the control unit. The oxygen sensor connector needs to be disconnected. Do not pull on the wire. You will ruin the connection and it's expensive to replace. If you wish to remove the sensor from the exhaust instead, make sure you soak it with some WD-40 overnight to make sure the threads loosen up a bit. The next few steps are going to show you how to remove the engine only and leave the transmission in place supported by a jack. I don't recommend doing this no matter what. It's so much easier at this point to remove the four mounts, two on the transmission bar and two that you'll see later, and drop the engine and transmission as one piece. If you want to just pull the engine, here's what you need to do. There are four nuts that hold the engine to the transmission. The white arrow is pointing to the lower right one on the transmission. Removing these nuts will not make the engine less stable because there are four studs that exit the engine case and are inserted into holes in the transmission case. One or two of these nuts may be difficult to reach using standard tools. You might need to obtain some extensions and universal socket wrenches in order to obtain the right angle for removal. The fourth nut that keeps the transmission and engine together is also the one nut that holds on the starter. The nut is a 10 millimeter barrel nut and requires a 10 millimeter hex key or socket to remove it. This nut is not visible from any angle, so removal is especially difficult and must be done by feel. The lower barrel nut that holds the starter is similar to the one on top and does not have to be removed in order to remove the engine. If you drop down the engine slightly before removing this nut, you may be able to reach it from inside the engine compartment. Again, I would have skipped the last two steps and dropped the engine and transmission together. It is so much easier than trying to access those nuts and bolts we just described while it's in the car. Anyways, if you're going this route, when you're ready to lower the engine, place the floor jack underneath the engine sump plate. Loosen the motor mount bolts located in the center of the motor mounts, white arrows. On the later cars, there are no nuts on the opposite end of the bolts. They are screwed directly into the threaded motor mount bar. It's best to have a friend have a hand on the engine to keep it balanced. If you're pulling the engine and transmission together, you want to place the jack further forward on the engine close to where it mates with the transmission. Once it has lowered enough for the fan to clear the bumper, pull the motor and transmission, or just the motor itself, out from the car. If you need more room, you can jack the car up higher, remove the rear bumper and or valance, or remove some of the fuel injection in order to make the engine fit underneath the car. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.